And I'm joined now by former NFL running back Brian Mitchell, who's an NFL analyst for Comcast Sportsnet and NBC Sports, and MSNBC political analyst Hugh Hewitt. He's the host of The Hugh Hewitt Show on Salem Radio Network and the host of Hugh Hewitt right here on MSNBC. Thanks to both of you for being with us. Uh, Brian, let me start with you. We had seen, I think, a bit of a lull, actually, at the start of this season in terms of uh, NFL players on the sidelines during the anthem participating in, in a form of protest. On Sunday, obviously, everything changed. Uh, I'd never seen that many players participating in it. What was the message? What was the message w w that you say uh, would say they were delivering uh, with so many NFL players doing that? Was this about the original issue of police uh, uh, brutality, of policing? Was this about the president? What was the message that, that, that came out of that? I think it's a combination of things. I think when you look at the fact that there was, some guys stood up last year, some guys were well, kneeled down, some guys sat down, but a lot of guys were on their fence and not understanding whether or not they wanted to put themselves out there. You know, they watched what happened to Kyle Ka Ka Kaepernick and how he was ostracized and things like that, so some guys backed off of it. But once the president came out and he began to challenge guys and attack them in that manner, you're talking about a bunch of competitors out there. They're going to they're gonna galvanize and come together, and they're going to support their uh, guys that are doing things. Uh, most of these guys do great things in the community. Most of these guys try to go out there and combat different things that a lot of guys are kneeling to talk about. And then all of a sudden you get someone calls them sons of bitches and all that type of thing. What do you expect them to do? They're going to sit up there and support each other. And as I stated earlier on the show, I believe that the owners got involved because when you start telling people to leave the stadium, that's impacting their pocket. They, they got involved because of that more than, than, than because of any reason that a guy was kneeling or not standing for the national anthem. Hugh, that raises an interesting point, the idea that, that Trump, with what he said on Friday, introduced sort of a, a new ethic into this, the ethic of standing for your teammate, of standing by uh, your teammate, where before I think there'd been a lot of objections here uh, on just the idea of is the anthem the right time to be making a, a protest about policing? Did Trump, with his comments, make this about something bigger, uh, about loyalty to teammates? Uh, he did. I think it's very unfortunate the president used the SOB term. I don't think that ought to be used about anyone. Deshaun Kaiser, who's the new rookie quarterback of the Browns, said, I'm not an SOB. He's a good kid from Toledo Central Catholic. Going to be a great quarterback for the Browns, whom I love dearly and have been watching since before Brian was born. I think I saw Bill Nelson <laughs> handing off to uh, Leroy Kelly before Brian was even born. I do think we're at a Humpty Dumpty moment for the NFL and that the Washington Manhattan media is focused on the president. But the president connects with Budweiser America in a way that the NFL's got to be very aware of. I don't like his language. I deplore it, in fact. But he, the, the reaction I got on the morning radio show today was so diverse. There were 330 million different reactions to yesterday, and there were hundreds of different messages sent, including by Pittsburgh Steeler tackle and Army Ranger Villanueva. To, I, I mean, it was so complicated, Steve, but it's a Humpty Dumpty moment. And I think the NFL is putting at risk the marginal fan and even some long-standing fans who may not have held season tickets with the Browns since 99 like I have, but who are very much concerned that the game is becoming polarized and politicized when it used to be something about which people came together. Yeah, Brian, let me ask you about that. I think we showed this poll, but uh, and it's, it's from a year ago. We'll, I, I bet there's going to be a bunch of polls in the next week, and we'll see if the numbers have changed. But a year ago, when Colin Kaepernick was sort of starting up with the, uh, with the protest, 54 percent of Americans said, as a form of protest, they, they didn't approve of the idea of kneeling during a national anthem, not standing during the national anthem. At that time, President Obama was asked about it. He said he wants Mr. Kaepernick and, and others who are on a knee, I want them to listen to the pain they may cause someone who for example, who had a spouse or child who died in combat and why that might hurt them to see someone not standing. That was, at least originally, the, 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 one of the major uh, issues at play here. Is there still room in this debate for the case to be made that uh, there are legitimate political issues out there to be raised involving policing, but the anthem is not uh, the right way to do that, just given how much the flag and the anthem mean to so many people? That's that's uh you know you can you can put it that way if you want to just ignore the fact of why they're doing it. I, I think the whole thing about this situation is, it's not anyone's right to tell another person when it's their time to go out there and try to stand for something. And I think we, we don't see anywhere written in the Constitution or anywhere else that you have to stand. Because I always ask the question, and I went to a bar right after Colin Kaepernick started doing this last year, and I stood there when they started playing the national anthem on TV. I looked around to see who was going to stand up. 
Nobody got off of their butts. Everybody sat down. So I stood up and said, y'all not going to stand up. See, this is the whole thing about it. We sit up here and we're, ta we're telling athletes, when the Department of Defense started paying the NFL and all this stuff, and that's why guys stand up for the National Anthem and they play it prior to the football game. This is not nothing that's been written in history. Okay, and then now you see the NFL having to give money back because they were paying them to fly overs and all these different type of things. This was thrown onto the players. Okay, and now when the players want to say, okay, this is when everybody wants to watch it, this is when I'm going to make my statement because everybody around this country in all facets use athletes to promote whatever their agenda is. But when an athlete wants to sit, or stand up for something, and, and when you stand up for inequalities or people p dying and nobody get, are having any consequences for it, I think that's just as important as anything else. We could sit here and try to make it seem like, well, not at the national anthem, but when? If I write a congressman, you're not going to hear about it. The millions of people won't hear anything about it. We're talking about this over a year later. Why? Because somebody did it at a time when it was uncomfortable. Protest is not comfortable to people. And that's the whole thing about it. We sit in here, we act like anytime someone does something against what we think, then, you know, we got to just us and push them away. I think it's the right time because there are people that also fought. People that go to war all the time that say, this is their right. I have no problem with that. But nobody jumps on that side. It's always against what the guys are doing for the people that don't like the fact that they chose this moment. And this issue of race, obviously, is it's unavoidable in this. Just to, This was a, a black NFL player who wanted to make a statement originally uh, about policing. Uh, you, had, uh, you saw the scenes yesterday. Uh, you can see on your screen right now, lots of black players yesterday were, uh, were making this statement uh, during the game. Uh, before the game, I should say. The White House, though, was asked, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the White House spokes, uh, spokesperson, she was asked today uh, if this is an issue of race. I just want to play what her response was. The president said that kneeling has nothing to do with race. Colin Kaepernick took a kneel, took to his knees in these games, many of these games, specifically because he said black people in this country were not being treated fairly by police. How is that not an issue of race? I think that the focus has long since changed, uh, and certainly the message and what a lot has been communicated over these last several weeks uh, through this process, through this protest by these players. <laughs> Hugh, is that, a, is that a tenable position for the White House to say race has nothing to do with this? No, no. It would be much better if the White House were to say it. it used to be the color in the NFL meant that when maize and blue Tom Darden went to scarlet and gray Ohio, he became a brown and orange brown. That, that it was a colorblind league and that John Wooten could play next to Dick Shafrath and people wouldn't notice it. Jim Brown had problems with race. There have always been issues with race in every professional sports. Colin Kaepernick took the knee and his socks had policemen dressed as pigs or pigs dressed as policemen. It was insane and it set off all the fireworks that we see today. I would like everyone to step back, sit down for a while, calmly talk, like LeBron James did today. Gave a long press conference. I read every word of it. Steph Curry, everyone, outside of the context of the national anthem. I believe that is a uniquely uh, uh, important moment that uh, misunderstood intentions become very divisive. And I think the NFL is really at a moment where they could use some leadership. And I would guess, Steve, if you went around the room for all the crisis communicators surrounding the commissioner, not one of them voted for Donald Trump. I think they are missing the peril that the NFL is in on top of their, their brain issues that are coming up that I disagree with the president about as well. But everyone should just step back here and try and make Sunday the day that people, and Monday night and Thursday night, the day that people enjoy professionals like Brian, uh, Brian doing what they do best, which is playing a game Americans love. All right, Hugh Hewitt and Brian Mitchell. Thank you both for the time. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, Stephen. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.